Welcome to Roland's Travels. We're going to be taking a look today at Old Sarum Castle in Wiltshire, close to the city of Salisbury. We're going to cross over the bridge that takes over this deep ditch that's protected the castle. There's another ditch behind me which protects the ground surrounding the castle. It's quite a high hill that has been built up over the years. There was probably life going back here, right back to the middle Iron Age, around 400 BC. The Romans were here as well, so lots been going on in this area. Now you're going to notice lots of flint, and that's because this packed the stone walls. The worked stone has long been removed, and we'll take a look at the reason for that later on in our tour. As we walk along this ledge, the view to Salisbury is actually obscured at the moment by the mist that is filling in the valley. That does clear later as you'll see. Now the sign tells us that Bishop Richard Poor built the cathedral down in Salisbury and he set it up moving the church community away from Old Sarum. So as we dig deeper into the castle's history we'll share that with you and hope you enjoy it so please become a subscriber to Roland's Travels both on YouTube and on the website rolandmillward.com where there's always more information added to help you appreciate the places that I visit the stories that we tell and relate to you so thank you please do that and enjoy the things we always find with English heritage properties who manage this along with National Trust properties also same for them is there's usually plenty of information boards and it's no different here so we're going to look at this one so we're looking now at King John's new hall every castle had a, a great hall for entertaining and uh, this was no exception so this was a, a new hall to replace one that they'd outgrown and it looked like this was for King John which is about 1201 to 1208 uh, but it may have been used as a courthouse it does mention here that the hall was never properly maintained it was already in need of repair by 1247 and in 1307 the roof fell in though the walls were still standing in 1330 and its remains were discovered by excavations in 1911 so this is King John's, and we use the term lightly, New Hall. Certainly another beautiful October morning. Lots of mist around, but it's burning off quite quickly now. Lots of dew on the grass, so quite slippy. But we'll go over this direction and show you some more. So this is where the privileged few would come. So in the 12th century, few visitors would have gone beyond this point. Only those who had been granted an audience with the king or his officials would have entered a building to your right and climbed the stairs to an upper courtyard. At that upper level was the royal palace. So looking here, the palace was built for King Henry I. Toilet block was added in the 13th century. All interesting stuff, isn't it? So we're standing now in the chapel of St. Margaret. So very important for anyone is to have a source of water. So this is the main source. The original depth of the well shaft is unknown, but it may have been more than 70 meters, or that's around 230 feet. And they would have needed equipment to have lifted that water in a bucket. And as it says here, there was probably a well house surrounding it. 
make it a little bit easier while people were gathering their water supplies. Let's go through this opening from the chapel. I think this was probably all part of it. Let's just leave this area, go through this gap. Bit of a step up. And we have a set of steps leading down. Here, let's have a look what's down here. So, those were the steps. Beautiful blue sky again. Just give you a close up of those. And another one there. They made walls, and they were thick walls. So this is the castle's back entrance. distance over there is the layout of the former cathedral built here which was then transferred to Salisbury the new Salisbury as time went by let's take a look what's up these stairs so at the top the steps we come to this section where there have been rooms above our head so when the castle was abandoned in the 16th century, the upper parts of the Great Tower were demolished. And uh, as it says, we can only guess what it would have looked like. So here we have a better view from this height of the cathedral laid out there on the ground for us. Much of the stone of that was taken away into Salisbury for the new one, I believe. So we've got another signboard to have a look at. So we're looking at in the basements. So we've entered the basements of the Great Tower in a way that would not have been possible in the Middle Ages. We would originally have to climb the stairs to the level of the courtyard palace, then up more stairs, up a second floor of the tower and then down another set of stairs to a ladder where we are now. So this room was part of a two-room storage basement and when the New York when the new courtyard palace was built about 1130 
this part of the great tower may have been used as a prison since it was a secure place in the castle. In this way the Norman word donjon meaning a lordly house turned into dungeon meaning a prison. That's interesting. Again, there's my shadow back, but again we can just see how thick the walls are. They're well over a metre. So I'll go down this flight of steps and then up the other side. Right, so another flight to climb. And this is what we see when we reach the top. Flight of stairs there. Obviously going nowhere now. It's back down to the rooms in the chapel we were in earlier. And let's uh, take a look at our next information board. And the mist is now clearing. We're getting a much better view from the top of here. So now it's the King's Great Tower. One of the largest buildings in the castle. So it says a massive symbol of power and authority. So our next sign is telling us about the cathedrals of Old Sarum and the ruins that we can see and have already shown you. We'll just have a look again. Just over there, we'll take a closer look at that later. Obviously we've got the aerial view at the moment from up high here. Another flight of stairs that now just go skywards to nowhere else in particular but obviously would have done in the day now this is fenced off so there must be a drop through here we'll take a look down to the basement area Ooh, let's see if we can move further around go this way That is a long way down. Let's try it. A very long way down. Now that's where the chapel is over there and we walk through there earlier so now we're above that part of the castle. So it's quite incredible the amount of labour it must have took to build this all by manpower and basic mechanical things they could make to some degree usually out of wood and iron but quite an achievement and just building the mound whether they, the mound was already here to an extent it could have been from previous here, eras but uh, certainly took a lot of work so the Great Hall was the most public part of the Royal Palace and there's a drawing of what this area would have looked like. So miss this sign coming in because we went round the walls to start with. It tells us what a busy courtyard this was. Just 
take a look around the ditch around the outside of the castle here obviously it gets filled in over years with the vegetation but it would have been very deep you get an idea of it from here but it was quite a deep one so I would like to bring you to the signboards this talks here about the conqueror's inheritance that William the Conqueror inherited Old Sarum from the last Saxon king of England I think the shape of those two trees is interesting. It looks like something sliced half of them off on each side, doesn't it? So we're just walking further round the outside of the castle here and take ourselves to the cathedral area. Learn more about that as we go around. Now this is what is called a Mott and Bailey castle. The Mott is where the castle was on top and this area of level ground is called the Bailey. And as expected we're going to come to an information board. Let's see what this says. The bishops and their cathedral. So here we have an illustration of how the east end of the cathedral may have looked in 1135. It was the creation of Bishop Roger. He's actually buried in the current cathedral. So leaving the sign behind, we'll move across to the foundations of that cathedral and already I'm heading towards another information board that we can take a look at we'll show you that I've done quite a lot of research online that's going to appear in the blog at rollermillward.com so do check that out as always you'll find links in the description of my YouTube videos if you're on a YouTube channel Roland's Travels thank you for doing that I'm going to slip down this slippy slope and it is quite slippy today because it's very wet with dew. Here we go. Let's get to that information board. So there's lots of places to see that English Heritage manage. You can become a member. You probably start saving money after three visits so it doesn't take a lot to uh, get your money back and some of the places that you go to of course that includes Stonehenge can be quite expensive so having a membership you get your free parking and also be able to enter the properties without paying again so that's a great advantage so check out English Heritage now we're going to go to this board here first of all let's test this one out see what it tells us I'm going to get a plan of the layout of what was the cathedral here and they call it the Hidden Cathedral. So it was demolished in favour of a new one at Salisbury. It was begun in 1220. Aren't we going back a long way in time? So uh, a thousand years, amazing history really, that uh, Britain has. But it wasn't until 1834 that people noticed marks in the grass that show where this old cathedral had stood. And excavations took place in 1912 to 1914 reveal the foundations we see today. Let's take a walk down this way and of course I have spotted another information board. I hope you're keeping count. So all this stuff is flint which would have been surrounded by, it wouldn't have been rough walls by the way, it would have been faced stone and the flint was kind of the packing material to give it strength and the stone would have gone either side 
of this so the wall would have been ultimately thicker than what you see now but smooth with worked stone which has all been taken away for other buildings particularly Salisbury Cathedral and no doubt many other places around in the area have benefited from the work stone that was here so imagine working all that stone how much there was in fact just moving it a few miles into Salisbury as well um, quite incredible stuff really a lot of hard work for not much pay I would imagine either for uh, many of the poor old workers that were involved in this let's take a look at this board here and this one's called to the glory of God it says the nave of the cathedral is the only part that ordinary people are allowed to attend the ceremonies involved only the clergy took place at the far end closed off behind the screen so we're at the kind of the bottom end of the cathedral here says when church services were not being held however the nave of the cathedral would have been the setting for many non-religious activities strange as it may seem meetings were held here bargains were offered and deals were struck sitting on this hilltop it would have been seen for miles around you can see Salisbury spire from a long way away but to think that you could see this because the height of it on top of here would have been uh, quite something to see in its day wouldn't it we are high in fact I can just see Salisbury Cathedral peering up just because it's very tall it's the tallest in the UK isn't it and um, with very little in depth of foundations either which is incredible how it stood all these centuries as well I'm going to go over here a minute take a look at these foundations I'm actually getting to some steps there and there's lots of rabbit holes up here as well let's go for the steps does remain a little bit of stone around that would have been a pillar there of some kind let's go down and have a look we would have done but it's closed off at the moment that's a shame and the same with this area too Hopefully something stood there it was quite a little town really in its day So I'm just going to head for this little pathway to take us over to the remaining wall over there. See what kind of view we can get as well. deep drop this side as well with a ditch and a raised section so all aim to be protected in case of enemy invasion of course this is the early days of William the Conqueror he'd already done that work but there were obviously people not happy and Vikings were still trying to do their bit And of course, with him coming along, there are many words in the English language that are now derived from the Norman, from Old French. 
That's why we have the words like castle and battle for that very reason. Let's go around the front of this. There's certainly where some good lumps of stone here, aren't there? Just look at that. Imagine hauling the big heavy lumps of stone up the hill and then up the wall. What a job. Let's get back on the path a minute. Now as the mist is disappearing you can see the rural landscape of Wiltshire under this beautiful blue sky. It is quite interesting that the Normans, because they were the rulers and spoke their version of French, is that nearly all administration words that you used in English actually derive from that. So uh, that's a little fact I found out the other day, courtesy of the YouTube channel Rob's Words. Worth checking him out. And again, there's a, as you look down there, there's a footpath on top of the other embankment, which has created this huge ditch. I'm just going to carry on along this footpath and I'll bring you back with me in a short while. All of this area would have been occupied with uh, people that needed to live here and work at the castle. Traders, carpenters, the maintenance people, the cooks and the bottle washers etc. would have all been around here. So. So a little mini town really and probably bigger than many villages out there there wouldn't have been too much out there go over towards old Sarum in that direction the, the town and trading estate and Salisbury is to my right as uh, I'm walking along here I get over the other side in a minute. Can take a look. So, having crossed the stile over the stile, we've come. That brings us back to the car park. And we can see Salisbury Cathedral Spire. You can see that just in line with the cars which are in the middle there. You can see it rising up into the air, well above Salisbury. Trying to equal the height of this hill, I'd imagine. And obviously, this one would have had a cathedral going even higher off the top on this level, not the very highest level that you can see, but this level here. And again, this would have all been inhabited. Archaeologists and historians are looking at all of this and discovering things all the time. But it wouldn't have just been empty green. Every inch would have been used. And I can see another information board. Let's go take a look at that. And get an idea of the depth of these defences. And over time they do get filled in a little bit with the vegetation growing and building up layers so it would have been even more impressive in days gone by and this is definitely carved out of the rock face there no doubt much of that would have been chalk and flint that's been used in the construction of the buildings here at old serum let's take a look now what we've got here So 
So this is putting England on the map. So this is to do with, the, in 1794 the Ordnance Survey was set out to check the accuracy of the first mapping of southern England which had begun ten years earlier. From a point just below Old Sarum, Lieutenant William Mudge laid out a baseline 36,574 feet long. From each end of the line the positions of distant places were plotted using a huge theodolite made in 1791 by Jesse Ramsden. The accuracy of the process, which was repeated all over England, depended on Jesse Ramsden's craftsmanship and on William Mudge's surveying skill in setting out the first base life of Old Sarum. The nearer end of Mudge's line is marked by an inscribed stone beside the modern A345 in front of us. Ah, there you go. And this is the the other light that was used. So in front of me we have Old Serum and if I rotate right round we have New Serum or as we call it Salisbury and that is Salisbury Cathedral right in the centre there towering above the city of Salisbury and down below the protect, protective ditch runs all the way round and anyone watch they can walk along all the way round from here too. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video of Old Serum Castle and the foundations of the cathedral. Please do give the video a thumbs up and become a subscriber if you're not already here on YouTube. Click the notification bell and then you'll know every time a new video goes on. You also get notified by YouTube that it is there available for you. Do subscribe to Roland's Travels at rolandmillward.com and that's where you'll get more details in written form along with a podcast. We have some nice guests uh, we interview to tell you more about history and places and other things so do check that out as well. Thank you for your support. I'll just turn around again and give you a view over Salisbury here in Wiltshire. Do take care. Bye for now.